guys, welcome back. This is Mrs. D, and today we're gonna go over understanding inequalities. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is understand that an inequality is used with a variable to represent multiple solutions. So let's talk about a couple of these words real quick. So the variable is going to be our letter that we use to represent a number or a missing number. And in this case, we can have multiple solutions. So a solution is an answer to your problem. And so that means that the number that solves your problem can actually be multiple numbers. Let's take a look at the inequality symbols and their meanings. And this might help you understand a little bit better what we're talking about. And then we'll go on with some examples. So there are four different symbols that are used to represent these inequalities. And the first symbol is the less than symbol, okay, where the less than symbol, if you hold up your left hand and make an L with your thumb and your pointer finger, that is the direction of your less than symbol. So that means that it is less than. The greater than symbol points the other direction, and this means that the number is greater than. Now, what that means, just to help you out a little bit, is that the smaller part of your symbol, so in this case, if I had one is less than three, and in the other case, I could say three is greater than one. So then the other one we have is that the less than or equal to symbol. So this third one means that it can be less than or equal to. So in this case, if one is what I start with, that means that my answer on this side could be one, it could be two, it could be three, it could be any number that is equal to or greater than one on the right side. And then the last one is your greater than or equal to symbol. And that means that, again, if I had three over here, I could have a three, a two, a one, and so on. Both of these could go on. Again, with these up here, I could have multiple numbers if I wanted to. So that means that one is less than three, but I could have multiple solutions there because one is less than a lot of different numbers. So let's go on here with the next part of it where we can use an inequality to graph the solution on a number line. So let's look at a couple of inequalities here. So if I have x is less than seven, and then my other one, three is less than x. So let's start with x is less than seven. So I wanna graph this on my number line. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this, if you wanna think about it being less than, you can. Um, with the second one, how it's written differently, I'll show you in a minute how to write it correctly. But as long as your variable, which in this case is our x, is on the left side of your inequality, okay, as long as your variable's on the left side of the inequality, your inequality is pointing in the direction that the arrow is gonna go. So let's graph this one. So I'm gonna find my seven on the graph. That is the number that I know. And it says that x is less than seven. So since x is not equal to seven, I'm gonna have an open circle at seven. And then I'm gonna shade everything less than that. So it can go all this way. And we just put an arrow at the end to show that it does keep going on to infinity. So x, can be any number less than seven. It can't be seven, so we put an open circle there, and then we draw our arrow to the left. So for this one, three is less than x. If I wanna write it with my variable first, I have to flip the inequality. So what I'm actually saying is x is greater than three. So in this case, I wanna find my three on the number line, and I'm gonna draw an open circle at three, and then I'm gonna shade everything greater than three. So I'm gonna shade to the right. Again, since my variable is now written on the left side, 
you'll see that my greater than symbol is pointing in the direction that my arrow is gonna go on the number line. Now let's try a couple of other ones because we did mention that we also have the or equal to symbol. So here we have x is less than or equal to nine. So I'm gonna find the nine on my graph. The difference here is I also can be equal to nine. So now I'm going to shade in my circle because I can equal nine and I can be anything less than nine. So I'm gonna shade all the way to the left, but I'm going to include nine. Again, with my x is greater than or equal to negative five, I'm gonna find negative five on my number line. I'm going to color it in, and then I'm gonna shade everything greater than negative five. So that just shows that it is, x can be any number, negative five or greater than. Now we can also use a phrase or real world situation to write and graph the inequality. So you're not gonna see when you're just walking around, someone's gonna say X is less than three. Okay, they're going to give you some type of a situation. So let's talk about this situation. We have the sum of Y and one is greater than three. So that means that I need to write this out to where Y sum means plus one is greater than three. So that means that any number that I add to one has to equal something greater than three. Well, let's go ahead and get this y by itself just to make this a little bit easier. So in that case, I would say that two plus one is three. Right, so I'm gonna say that y has to be greater than two because it can't be two because it's not an or equal to, it has to be greater than two. Okay, so y is greater than two. So now I'm gonna find my two on my number line. I'm going to draw an open circle and then I'm gonna shade everything greater than. All right, well, let's test this out now because I know it can't be two because two plus one equals three and this is not an equal to symbol. All right, so let's try the next number, three. Three, if I substitute a three here, three plus one is greater than three. Well, three plus one is four and four is greater than three. So that checks out. If I were to plug in any other number greater than two, it's going to be a true statement. So that means that I have done this correctly. So now we're gonna try a few practice problems which are going to include real world situations. So the lowest temperature in January was negative five. All right, so I'm gonna start my inequality with negative five and then I'm gonna put T for temperature and I know that negative five was the lowest temperature. So T has to be greater than or equal to negative five. And it tells me that the lowest temperature was negative five. So that's why I know it can be equal to negative five. So now we just have to graph this. So we're going to do this time a closed circle on our negative five and shade everything greater than. So that means if the lowest temperature was negative five, the temperature in January could be any number negative five or greater. So all boxes must weigh less than two pounds. So let's start with our inequality. And the first thing we wanna write is our two because we know that two is the number that we're given. All the boxes, so let's give it a B for our letter, must weigh less than two pounds. So that's going to be a less than symbol. That means that two pounds is not the greatest number. It can't equal two pounds. It's gotta be less than two pounds. So go ahead and think about your, your number line here and how we're going to graph this. You can pause the video and come back and check your graph.
All right, so let's check what you did for your graph. If you don't have one in front of you, uh, you should be able to at least think about it. So we're going to have an open circle for just a less than symbol. And since my variable is written on the left side, it's gonna be pointing in the same direction as my arrow on the number line. So you're going to graph everything less than two and you have an open circle because it does not have an equal to symbol. So let's go ahead and recap what we went over here in this video of understanding inequalities. So first, an inequality is used with a variable to represent multiple solutions. So remember we have the variable, which is our letter. We have the inequality symbol, which can be less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. And those inequalities help us understand that our variable can be multiple numbers. Second, we can use an inequality to graph the solution on a number line. And third, we can also use a phrase or real world situation to write and graph an inequality. And remember, you always want to write your inequality so that your variable is on the left side of your inequality symbol so that your inequality is pointing in the direction that it's gonna go on the number line. And then also remember, if it is less than or greater than, it's an open circle. If it's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, it's a closed symbol. If you still have a couple of questions after you watch this video, then be ready to ask something specific so I can help you with understanding inequalities. This is Mrs. D signing off with Understanding Inequalities. Have a great day.